Welcome back, everybody, to the 2023 Derby City Classic One Pocket Division. As you see on your screen, we've got Evan Lunda and Blaine Barkas. We are in round number five, and neither player has a loss. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer, and I'll be here with you today walking us through the shots and doing the best I can with the tools I have. Looks like Evan wins the lag. This is a race to three. Let's see which pocket he uh, chooses to break to. Evan is a, another player that has really come up over the years. Now, he's breaking closer to the rail on this new cloth, which we haven't seen as much. Sometimes you'll catch a kiss, but boy, he hit him really nice. He wants it to get up, though. Yeah, that one is that one ball is definitely the ball that Blaine is going to go at. <laughs> How he goes at it is on him, but I like playing it two rails, drawing your cue ball up towards the stripe on the left side, and hopefully making the one off the six or the three. Okay. Interesting. I mean, that, that wasn't a bad shot. I'm not real familiar with Blaine. I know he's from Texas. I know he's got like a 716 Fargo. So he's clearly a good player. Uh, he's got to be a young gun. I'm sure he doesn't play a lot of one pocket. Probably plays decent, though, if he's in round five without a loss here at the Derby. Evan goes ahead and pockets the one, conceding that ball. So Blaine takes an early lead with one to nothing in the ball count. Yeah, Evan is a crafty player, very crafty player. Um, he's been playing a lot of poker lately, but very, very crafty. He, he knows the ins and outs of the game, shall I say, and he put his own little spin on his style. Very good at banking. Very good in small areas. I'd say his biggest, I mean, his only weakness, maybe. I mean, his the weakest part of his game might be his shooting, maybe. Uh, but as far as banking and moving and working in tight areas, Evan is one of the best to do it. Is he going to thin the six? He is. Hey, he's done well. He's done very well there to keep Evan off of a, a good bank. Evan's going to the 14 immediately. I think here you're really just... He's going to cross the cue ball over. He's banking this one rail. He caught it just a hair thick. He was real close, though, to actually pocketing that bank. Very difficult shot that he tried. I immediately see the 13-7 and just suck down onto the 4 and 11, I believe that is. So you want to hit it with a little speed. Okay. It's okay, but, but the only concern with that is that you lose control of the, the cue ball and the object ball. You have to hit it so hard to follow forward. Um, so he'll probably take a look back and... Yeah... I think Evan can play this one of two ways. He could actually swing the cue ball or he can kill the cue ball to the right side, but it's a little steep to do so. Yeah, I like swinging it because you can you can kind of go all out doing that. Only issue is he, it's really easy to hit that ball too fat, and that's what he's done. And that causes, that causes, and I talk about this a lot, it causes a possibility of losing your position. Uh, Blaine, once again, he's leveled out, and here I would elevate 
pounding the 10 into the 2 and stunning the cue ball to the left side rail. Instead, he's leveled out. He, that just doesn't do anything. And I'm not knocking him. I'm hoping he watches this so that he can improve. Uh, it takes a special kind of stroke to be able to stun the cue ball. Well, Evan's shortened this up as well, but you know, look at the side pocket. Look at the side pocket. So what Blaine did worked out, but it wasn't the right shot. Um, he's taking a peek at the at the 11, I believe it is, or the 13 if it's out. Touching is in. That is the rules they play. Base of the ball is no longer in one pocket. The reason being is base of the ball can become a big problem. <clears throat> Everything has to be out. And therefore, the other rule to that is that the cue ball, when you're breaking or with ball in hand, has to be all the way in. The issue with base of the ball is that it, it could be so close to the point where we're talking a fraction either way could cause an argument or a dispute. Blaine is taking on this stripe that looks like to be the 14. The 3 and 8 look nice. He's knocked the 14 down nicely. Very good stroke. I have not had the opportunity to really watch him play. I like the stroke that he put on that ball. I think, I, I, I would assume, I mean, he's a rotation player, I assume, so I don't, yeah, okay, now he's looking at that. That's what I was going to say. I would assume he understands the throw when two balls are close or frozen. I think you would have to catch the top side of that three using the 10 or the 2. And it might just not be on. The 8 might be too high. It might be going too high. Therefore, Blaine's considering the, the two-ball combination. It's a tough shot. Boy, how has he done? I can see why he is in round five without a loss. And I'm glad I'm doing this, and I'm glad you guys are with me. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. Do us a favor while you're at it. Go to YouTube, Railbirds TV, like and subscribe. They are doing great things for us, for future generations, and for pool. They are the only other stream in the tournament room for the Derby City Classic, and we love it. Now he's going to this. He does have the two ball available. I kind of I felt like that wasn't the decision. If he was going to do that, I think he could have done that prior with the ten ball and really opened everything up. But you notice the two went, and he could have drawn into the six and opened everything up as well, shooting the seven next. Well, he's done good. Pretty good. Even better if he can get a shot on that three. Did he get to the three? I don't think so. Noting his body language. But he can cut this seven. It is thin. I don't know if he can hold for the stripe up top. Blaine Barkus playing for three. Oh, man. Evan might have his hands full here. Young man looks good. He's got the old American shirt on. Polo shirt. I like it. That would tell me that he might even be trying out for Team USA or wanting, wanting them to take a look at him. Cutting this 13. I like, he's drawing it. I like coming over. I like whatever he did, and that's what he did. He drew it two rails. Probably easier for him to make the ball. He's playing for one. 
And I wouldn't say that this has been an easy out. I wouldn't say he's made it difficult on himself either. I just feel like this has been a bit of a tricky out. He's handled it, managed it quite well. Typically, when you're playing for your game ball, you just want to think ball speed. Oh, this is what he's done. Jeez. Wow. I'm impressed. Blaine Barkas, if I'm pronouncing that correct, which I think I am, takes game number one and stuns Evan Lunda. This is a race to three. No losses for either player. Round five. Somebody's got to go to the backside here. And he just cracked Evan Lunda's break. I believe we are in for a treat here today. Okay, he's choosing to break from more to the center. And, and, and on new cloth, guys, I've stated this before, it takes a little pressure off of the second ball, which relieves the corner ball from coming out as much. And there you see the customary kiss and the customary result. A lot of times that cue ball will get behind the 6 and 1 and 13 over there, but it did get behind the 3. Evan, I, I like Evan's pace in this game. Um, I almost feel like he's a slow player, but he's actually not. He's just a slippery player. Uh, very, very misleading sometimes. Kind of reminds me of a guy by the name of Ike Reynolds, but kind of on steroids. Like Evan is just a real slick mover and very good with, with his cue ball. He's played a pretty passive shot. I guess he's a little fortunate not to leave the bank on the two. Yeah. Blaine is immediately looking at the 12, and I don't fault that. Get the cue ball over to the long rail, center diamond, and you're in really good position. Ah, he elevated. I think you just flatten out and keep him doubled up. This isn't bad. It's turned out okay, especially since those two balls have kind of leveled against each other there on that side. It keeps Evan from being able to do anything with those. Not that he can get to them. What does the six look like from up here? Thirteen could possibly throw that six down. Yeah, I like that decision. Good, good escape. Nice cue ball. I don't know that Blaine can cut the uh, the three. I don't think he's going to cut it to three. But he could clip off the twelve and put him below the left side, the right side pocket here. Might get the twelve kind of close. If not, they're going to double kiss and stay somewhere around his pocket. So I definitely like clipping the twelve, put him below the lower, the right side pocket, the lower end of it. He's looking at it. Yeah, if he, he he gets a little more inside on that, I think he keeps him held. I I don't know if Evan can get to the entire ten ball or not. One thing he can do is kick behind it and slide behind. Well, okay. It doesn't look like he's going to do that. I think he, this tells me he can. 
Okay, he is kicking behind it, but I that's kind of why I was the way he was cueing the cue ball, I felt like he wasn't cueing it right. I thought he would use high. High X is low, so high X is reverse when coming off the rail. So it would have drawn the cue ball back to the rail versus low. It actually acts as high, so it sucks the cue ball straight down the rail. Um, and I know he knows that, so he wanted to hit it fuller. I just think that that was the wrong play on the cue ball. Well, here we are again. Blaine with ball in hand. Well, this is, this is actually a pretty sweet angle. He can go into this six, I think, heavy. If you can go into this sec, six full, you're guaranteeing yourself a shot on the two and three. I think he's got to drop more. Okay, he's missed the ball. Hmm. Probably took his eye off of the object ball. We do it a lot, especially when you're worried about what the cue ball's doing more than pocketing the ball. Yes, Evan can cut this 10 ball, but the problem is, is he is elevated. Probably not a lot he can do with the cue ball. He does owe one. And it's probably at about this point in time when Evan's saying, "Man, this this guy, this guy's keeping me in trouble here." And we've all been through that as as a as a higher level one pocket player. You take people for granted at times. I don't know if Evan knows Blaine or not, but I'll tell you what: these young guys, this day and age. Don't let them get a shot, because that's all they need. Difficult shot here. Very difficult. I'd say it's 50-50 to make the ball, or maybe 60-40 him to make the ball, and another 50-50 to even get a shot after it. Or worse. Yeah. Oh, boy. What does the 8-5 and five look at? Blaine's immediately going to it. You know what? Now that I look at Blaine a little bit more, I do know him. I have seen him play. I guess I just didn't put the face with the name. He's got the option to kick behind this softly, which is okay. If you hit it softly, you can you can snooker him on the on the left side of the table, or or you can play the the double kiss uh, cornbread red shot. Holy mackerel, boys and girls. What a shot that was. And not only that, he retained position. So he can pocket the two. Went up and ran into the six. Let's take a look. This has got to be the shot of the match. The double kiss. Typically, you don't want to shoot that when it's that far out. Uh, but Blaine Barkas does. Where's this going? Well, if that's where he played it, all this tells me is that this young man is fearless. And he's going to drop over for the 11. I don't see him elevate much. He seems to stay level a lot. Well, that stroke is why he doesn't need to elevate much to get the maximum out of the cue ball. This young man has a lot of potential. A lot. The 
it's kind of interesting, right? We 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 say uh, he's a nine ball player, but this day and age, it seems like more and more of these guys are understanding the game of one pocket. It's not as complicated as as it as it once was. And nowadays, people understand that you're really just fighting for the first shot, especially at this young man's level. Simplicity is the best thing in in one pocket. That's the best advice I can give you. Don't overthink. Keep it simple. Yeah, that's easy to do on new cloth. Overbank it, lengthening it out. Evan Lunda comes to the table again. Negative five balls to minus one. So he's got a a hole to dig out of. Yeah, that's the only problem with that is that. It wasn't laying right to protect the cue ball. <clears throat> At worst, I think that Blaine could roll on to the eight, putting the five in front of his pocket, and wedging Evan behind the eight and nine. You would want to catch a full hit, but you could always come off these balls over here. The three ball might actually go. Yeah. Yeah, that tells me that wasn't really on, so I would have considered considered rolling onto the eight, pushing the five to your hole. But I'm not at the table. Does Evan want to bank at this six? I don't think so. going to two rail the five out. You've got to protect against the one and three bank. Now he might. Okay. Just two railing it out. So Evan's body language has told me, he said, I've got to grind this guy out. He can definitely shoot with me. So now I've got to outthink him. Oh, you got to hit it. Oh, he has hit it. He's actually hit it great. Tables are fast. They play true. These are the new and improved four and a quarter inch diamond pro-ams. It's the first year diamond has upgraded the pockets to four and a quarter. And I think it's a universal standard. I mean, it's just perfect for one pocket. Great for rotation and bank pool. Takes the miss out of the game. So you, you, you don't miss as many balls that still fall, especially with the new cloth. You want the pocket that, I think. It's all right. I don't see anything wrong with that. I think that Evan's going to have to come down table and take a look at these balls. I don't think you can really do much with the six. Evan might have to kick at this one. Okay, he could see the three. He's really putting the screws down at this point, showing respect for the young man. Blaine looking to go back up towards the six. Yeah, he might have left. He might have left the straight back, but man, he can't really protect against the one. Three 
three rails? Okay. He's cut him off from the one. From at least making it, I believe. Can he make the one? Or is he shooting my shot now? He's going into the eight. I don't know if that angle's correct. Yeah. That angle wasn't right. He had the right angle prior. That angle was a little too steep. And I think he takes a little more time. He could have manufactured an angle, but he just kind of got down and didn't didn't put all of his focus into the shot. This could be a costly mistake as well, letting Evan get out of this position that Blaine had him in. Because Evan can see the five. Evan could two rail the five between a one and three and play his cue ball down on the bottom rail, just moving everything to his side. Or he can try something more aggressive. I don't feel like it's laying right to where he can just bank it into the three. Yeah, this is exactly what I saw. He's hit it a little firm. Didn't want to leave Blaine that much of the one to bank if he'd like. And that's what he's going to do. Let's see who, who this works out for. Where's your cue ball going? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, not terrible. He was trying to get him behind the 13 and 7 and 9. But pretty well controlled. He's keeping Evan at bay. He's not just uh, at free will giving Evan anything aggressive to look at. Is he playing two rails or one rail? Oof. I didn't think he could miss that one, but he played a really nice speed. Blaine looking to come off of this three. Did he get it up? I don't know that he got it up enough. This could cause some issues for Blaine. <clears throat> Evan's got a couple options. He can bank this into the bottom of the 14 or he can try and bank it clean. Yeah, I almost like banking it into the balls. I like I like Blaine's pace. I think he's only kind of made a, a quick mistake once so far that I've seen. Yeah. Did he get lucky? I don't think he got lucky there. And this is the chance that Evan was really working for. Oh. He wanted that to drop. Well, 
I hear myself in the background. I play Justin Hall. I got I got very, very sick, <laughs> unfortunately, into like the, uh, what was it, ninth or tenth round of the Banks, and it carried over for four or five days at Derby, and it was really, really bad. I was... I, I just was really sick. I don't know if it was COVID or, but everybody in the building was sick. I had a migraine. I couldn't get down on the ball. Just a tough, uh, tough week there. Once you get sick, can't afford to get sick. So Evan needed that bank to drop badly to get back into this game. <clears throat> I'm a little surprised at this. The two must not bank, clearly. It's got to be froze to the seven. That's why he's left it. And he's left that angle, trying to trick Blaine into trying to bank the two into the three or something. <coughs> Excuse me. He's left him in a kind of a funny position here. Um, he's he can't really reach the three. It seems like, but he's just kind. Of, I think he's just got to knock the three up table. And it's not fun. It's nothing he really wants to do. Yeah, yeah but I think that's what he's got to do. If the three's not frozen, he could just roll on to the right side of it softly. So something he can look at there is I would have force followed that hit it full and your cue ball would stun and stay so it would act as low it's probably a shot he's not used to he's a rotation player more than he is a one pocket player but he looks like he could play one pocket it's just an opportunity to learn something you can definitely force follow stun that ball or kill that ball what is Evan doing is he banking at this? Oh, he's hit this really, really well. And this is what he excels at. He is a monster at elevating, at banking, and controlling that cue ball, as you see. I couldn't fault Blaine for banking at this one. But I think he's got a clear kick at the bottom of the 15. He could, If he doesn't have a clear kick at the bottom of the 15, then I can't fault him. Ooh. Short. As you've noticed, both players have hit short. Hey, he's taking care of the cue ball, though. Nicely done. Evan, kind of tricky here. I don't, I don't know why he's not taking a look at the six fifteen. He needs to make something happen. He can go forward, and I don't. Yeah, now he's looking at it. I don't think he sells out a shot really going forward. Yeah, that's the only thing he didn't like about it. It definitely wasn't easy. Boy, this this shows me a little inexperience. You've got to try and take these balls out. You could you could kick behind the six, or you could shoot the fifteen up table and carry the six in. I, I mean, if he makes it, great shot. 
but if you don't make it, you're allowing Evan to get back in this game. And the difficulty, you're playing percentages, right? And that wasn't an easy shot. You're only getting one to allow your opponent back in the game and possibly lose the game, right? So when you're shooting one and you can't win the game from it, but you could possibly lose the game or allow your opponent back in the game, Everything kind of tells you at that point when you're weighing it out in your head that it's probably not the right decision. Oh, don't get me wrong, I've done it a million times. That's just part of learning. I don't know about that. Boy, he needed to get back further to be able to cut the six and open. The, he's got to get those balls open. Does the one go? If the one plays, we're going to find out right now. Yeah, we're going to find out right now what's going on with this. Oh, he did go into him, and he's... Does he get a shot? He actually hit it how he wanted to. I feel like he got quite unfortunate roll there. I don't know if he can make the seven. I don't... It, it, by his body language, it tells me he definitely cannot. He's going to be forced to pocket the 13. This is kind of why, guys, that I said early in the, or the first shot that Evan had is if he draws it back enough and kind of gets where the nine's at for the three, that following ball was right in front of the pocket so he could cut the three in and play the cue ball into those balls, just tickle them open, and then take the ball that's in front of your pocket. He didn't quite... Oof. He didn't quite get there, so he was forced to play the 15 the way he did. Blaine now playing for two. Evan pockets this ball for him, unless I've miscounted. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yes, Blaine playing for two. Did he get a rail? He might be playing for three. Ah, uh, he's playing for three. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah. You got to make sure you get a rail there. There's nothing wrong with elevating either, right? I know you're trying to tie the one and three up, but just get them up table. You've got a pretty good ball lead right there, six balls to two. Might be a, a, a sign of some inexperience, which is normal. See, that's kind of what I'm talking about. That's a pretty tricky creative shot. Didn't look like he did much, but he did a lot. He's opened the eight and two up. At minimum, let's just say he's opened the two up. But with the two, he can get to the eight. And something that simple has turned into something that, that could change the dynamic of this game. Blaine going to come off nine and drop down. Oh, he's going to take it a step further. He's got to keep that cue ball down. I don't know. Might not be bad. I didn't mind the idea. I don't think it's terrible. Yeah, he did leave the bank, and Evans put it on layaway, I think. He can take it out. But I guess my point to that is I think it's too risky. You don't want to you don't want to double kiss it. You don't want to scratch. 
give him the ball, and move on. Yeah, it's okay. But there's just nothing wrong leaving him right there. As a matter of fact, you've probably given him a better escape by putting him up here because he can come off of this 7. He, he needs to open the 7 up. So leaving him right there in the pocket, you can never really go wrong. Well, I mean, every time I say that, Evan makes an error, so he's going to go back one. Can he see the nine? I don't think so. Can he cross the seven and get behind the nine? I don't think so. He's banking the two as he's stunning forward. Oh, he, he did stun forward. He caught it a little on the high side. If you notice, the two went low. Did it get away with not leaving the, an easy bank? I think he can pinch this. He's got to be careful. Oh, he's hit it excellent. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. And he's given this up, and he needed two. Evan said, I've seen enough. I know you're going to make those two. So the dark horse, Blaine Barkus taking a two to nothing lead in a race to three who to thunk it if i was a bookmaker the price at the beginning of this match would have probably been like ah uh, let's say six to one maybe five to one maybe that's a little high maybe four to one but i'd have definitely had a, evan as a heavy favorite and i would have been wrong He's caught that second ball thick. Is he going to clip off of this six? I would take a look around. I would look at this a little bit more. He's going to try and put him behind the 14. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. A very difficult shot to execute. I might have taken a little more time there. And yeah, nice, nicely done. Uh, Blaine's, Blaine's got some trouble this rack. I don't believe the two and that stripe are available due to the twelve. I immediately look at the 9, though, right? You can follow down. So you're cutting the 9 just a bit and follow down behind the 13. I believe it's available. And you're going to get that 9 close to your pocket. You have to execute it well. He's not shooting it. And he found another way to try and get down there. It's not terrible. Immediately I can see Evan can come off the 13, two rails into the stack. And he sees it as well. One thing that I do see that Blaine doesn't do is he doesn't like to elevate. And typically, that's a great thing. But sometimes to get some movement in the furniture, you need to elevate. Evan didn't get there. So Blaine's got him a little, a little weak in the knees.
I wonder if he understands the kick and stick. He could kick to the bottom rail and stick. He's got to catch it full. Oh, he caught it too full. He was afraid of the scratch and caught it too full. And it's going to cost him. I don't feel that Evan will miss this bank. And the six does play. Well, he said forget about the six. Let's get up to the nine. Let's just get all of them. Come back for the four next. Doesn't want to get flat. He's gotten flat. Yeah, that's kind of kind of the last case scenario that you want. Or worst case scenario in that situation. Hmm. He's going to the three. Uh, he's hit it really well. It's another thing about his game, and I think I've touched on it, but he has an excellent touch. You can see how easily he, it, just very little effort it seems like. And he gets the most out of the cue ball when he's playing. I couldn't fault him for shooting that 11 now and, and drawing back. That's what he's looking to do. Yeah, you're going to guarantee yourself a shot on this 13 if you don't underhit it. Well, he's got a shot on the 14. And the 6 probably still goes, but he can get to the 8. A little steeper than I thought. He can definitely play the 13. It's not where he wanted to be, though. Going to come two rails to the four. Did he get there? He did. Really nicely done. <clears throat> Playing for two. Now he will drop down for this eight. He's got a couple options. He can load it up with inside, or he could probably get there going above the ten. I think he's got to load it up. I think there's too much risk in trying to come above the ten. Oh, he's hit here. What happened is he's hit the four too thin, um, causing the cue ball not to take the angle that he initially wanted it to take. So now he's got to, I don't think he can get through the gap. Now he's got to defend against all these balls that play. And even though he needs one, he's not out of the woods yet. Let's see how Blaine handles this type of situation. <clears throat> Rule of thumb in the game of one pocket, when you're behind in this situation and these balls are all down in your vicinity, you want to stay aggressive. You don't want to catch this 10 ball. Oh, he didn't. Oh, he's hit this too good. Oh, it's gone in. Evan gave him props, said you hit it good, and he darn sure did. He's got the cut on the 10, but the, the, the issue I see is he could make the 5 for him. And that's what he's looking at. That's the only problem here, and it's a big problem. Because you've got to hit the 10 so thin 
that I don't know you can, that you can escape the risk of pocketing the five. I think you've just got to go. You can't worry about what the five does, and if it goes in, it goes in. Oh, jeez. I need to watch this young man play more pool. He is he is talented. But if here he's just not not taking enough time in my opinion, but maybe I am wrong. I feel like, you know, you're on the hill. You need all. You have the opportunity to get there. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm talking about, right? Take a couple extra seconds and note that you probably have to draw out of that kiss on the 8. And if you don't have to draw out of it, then how are you going to kiss the 8 to where you contain an angle? Just really a, an important position in the match. And it requires a little more respect. I think he can cheat it a little bit, but he better pocket this ball. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a favorite to probably win this game right now. And he knows it. He knocks this seven down, and he uh, he can take this game. Oh, gosh, I don't see any. F oh, did it? I don't see any flaws in his stroke. And I'm looking for him, trust me. Did he get flat? Can he draw it back? You really want to try and get on this below this five in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> oh, boy. Well, he tried to get below it, but this will work. They each need one. Blaine Marcus leading two to nothing versus Evan Lunda. This is for the match. Oh, he's hit it short. He's hit it short. And he's left a return. Oof, this could be a heartbreaker for Blaine. Evan is... If there was anybody I wanted shooting this cross bank, Evan's one of them in this situation. And that's why. Oh, he's hit it. He's hit it low. I apologize. I jaywalked. Give me a ticket. It looked like he hit it sweet. Now here's that that kill follow shot I was talking about. I think he knows the shot. Oh, he knows the shot. He plays a lot more one pocket than I had initially assumed. I'm glad I didn't draw this young man. He'd already beat me. Oh, he's hit it well, but I don't think it's got the gasoline. He needed diesel. Cheap gas. Boy, he's taking this on. You work this hard. Be real careful here not to lose your cue ball. He's, he's hit it really nice. I'm impressed. 
I don't see any any falter or weakness out of Blaine. Doesn't want that to drop. He doesn't want it to get too close either. Yeah. Just roll this in. A little firm. Oh, he's fine. Now you got to be careful as well. Do you cross this to your side, just hitting it thick and sending the QL up towards the chalk? Or you can use outside, just like so. Uh-oh. I don't like the outside, though, because you can leave a bank. He's done pretty well, though. It's turned out okay. Another rotation from the 15, and Blaine has a pretty good cross corner. I like shooting that with inside and just coming straight up because it relieves all duties of leaving a cross corner. And I'm really playing to, to leave the 15 low. You're not really playing to make it or get it to your side. You're playing to leave it low, somewhere like on the right diamond uh, down there. This could be trouble for Blaine. He's got to be aware of the fact that this is there is a kiss available. He's going to try and spin out of it, but that could cause loss of cue ball. That could cause loss of cue ball. Ugh. He's avoided it. He can take a deep breath. I think Evan can just bank this up towards the right side of the table. Okay, I'm I'm a little surprised at this, unless it stops. He's allowed a three railer. He has allowed a three three railer. Blaine can go forward. I expect this to get close or short. Yeah, he's he's hit it so hard that it really shortened up. It's okay. Yeah, he's, he's left playing a little awkward again to where it's hard to even get this ball on his side of the table. Notice how much spin he had to put on it to avoid the kiss. Evan going to try and hang this up or just make it. Okay, he's just making it. I might try and hit it a little thicker there and maybe just hang it up in the corner. Not that it makes much difference. This has been a great match to commentate. Very fortunate. Yeah, he's looking at crossing it to just to like I said to his side of the table, but I don't I don't like using outside on the shot because you can both balls can get away from you. As you see, so if you just shoot that same shot, hit it a hair thinner with inside, your cue ball will come straight up. Um, and it just eliminates movement on the cue ball. Assuming he's going to kick this, or is he going right at it? Oh, he's going at it. He, all right. he can do that. He's that good at at the bank. Seven's got in a precarious position as well. I don't know that he can play the two-railer without flirting with the side pocket. 
Seems as he can. Holy mackerel. How do you... Oh, it's... Jeez. He's hit it well. Now I think he'll kick it out from the bottom rail. His side of the table. No? Okay, just cross the face of it. So if he kicks to the bottom rail, and he's going to kick it over towards the side pocket. The cue ball is going to stay somewhere around the corner. It keeps playing off of a shot. But I think he's going to bank at this as well. So Evan dodging some bullets. Let's see if he continues to wear that vest. Yes, he's continued to dodge. It's not getting any easier for him either. Blaine doing a great job of keeping Evan on the defense. Yeah, that's that's a great hit there. That might slow Blaine down a hair. Yeah, it's a nice shot. I'm impressed. This young man's played some one pocket. There is no doubt. I I just am not educated on his game enough, clearly. And uh, I hope he doesn't take offense to anything I've said in this match or anybody else. I'm just not educated in his game, being a senior senior citizen. I think he's got to do the same thing. He's got to just clip this softly. Yeah. It's a fraction from the three-railer. I don't think he can play it, but another rotation, and he sure could have. He's looking at it now. So you're gonna... I'm surprised at that. I didn't expect him to do this. I figured he might just pocket the ball and bring the cube over to the left corner. Blaine might have a bank here. Watch your cue ball. Oh, he's hit it way too thick and just real hard. So his backswing, I finally saw a little error. His backswing, his final stroke was real quick. Sign of uncomfort. So he was not comfortable. I expect this to get close. He is great at this backspin cross corner. Uh, he's hit it heavy. He's got Evan a little bit on, on tilt or a little bit off of his game. I guess I wouldn't call it on tilt. Evans stayed pretty sound in the game. Here it is again, this same shot, guys. Just clip the left side of the seven with a pinch of inside, playing the seven to the bottom rail, and a cue ball up. I mean, he's controlled it well, but... The shot I was discussing is, is a lot easier to execute and a lot less to go wrong. Now when the two railer is not on, it's not on, and it is not on here. Yeah. Yes, this was a mistake. I could clearly see that the cue ball was in the path of the seven off the second rail. This could be costly. And I hope it doesn't affect him for the rest of the match. 
But just like that, a thief in the night, Evan Lunda, takes game number three. And we have a one-pocket match. Evan said I was lucky. And I do agree. I mean, Evan Evan avoided some some arrows. He had some he had some darts coming at him from every angle and uh, escaped. I am your host, Scott Frost, aka the Freezer. Thank you all for tuning in. This is a huge game right here for Mr. Barkus. It's his break. He does not want to allow Evan back at the table breaking the balls at the hill. So he, if he's going to take advantage, he needs to do it now. Regroup. That game's over with. And that is a big thing about one pocket, right? Is it can get a little toxic. If you lose a game, it seems to carry over a lot of times. Especially if you lose a game you're not supposed to. they're discussing. I don't know if Evan's taking a break. I love the shirt that Blaine has on. Representing his country well. In more ways than one. Seems like he's got a great attitude. He's definitely got a great pool game. So this is a very big game. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer, and this is round five. Neither player has a loss. This would be a pretty big upset and a very good win for Blaine Barkus. Eh, he's hit him okay, but he doesn't have anything threatening the pocket, as I would say or call it. Can't tell if Evan can see enough of the 13 and 3. It could be available. I mean, he immediately looking at the 7. He wants to control the speed of the 7 to where it's not coming back over for Blaine to bank. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's anything wrong with just leveling out. Okay, he hit. Oh, boy. I don't think he meant to do that. He wanted to two rail it back to his side. I think, unless he played to cross side it and, and, and put it up in the stack, but I think he wanted something on his side of the table because now Blaine can come off of that seven. Or 15 and put him behind the 9, 14, 5. He can also do this. He's just got to hit it well. Two rails into the stack. Oh, he has hit it well. You want to get that 12 up a bit higher. He's making Evan work. And that's what you want to do in this game is make your opponent work. Constant pressure, constant pressure, constant pressure. Get yeah, I can't fault him there. Well done. I, I don't know if Blaine can see enough of the 12 to make it, but I don't even think he's entertaining it. What's he looking at? The 9, 14, 10, 8? I don't think that's available. I don't think he's looking at that anyway. <clears throat> I 
I like the pace that he's taking now. I, I kind of wish he would have done that in the midst of his run right at the end of the game, last game, where he, he could have got gotten out. But I understand. What's he doing here? Hmm. <laughs> Jeez. Nice shot. Evans got a headache. And I don't blame him. Blaine's been, been nothing but trouble for him this match. Even the game that Evan won was like uh, he had to pull about 13 molars just to get it done. Well, I'm trying to figure out what he's got here that's worth it. Interesting. That's interesting. I don't know. I guess he pushed out there. Really group yourself together there, Blaine. And you can come off that 15 and nudge him behind the 9, 14, and 5. That is definitely available. Don't talk yourself out of it. Contain your position. Yeah. This is okay, but he's going to have distance from the cue ball and object balls if he doesn't pocket this. Yeah, that's the problem. That's, you know, and, and he doesn't show a lot of inexperience, but that's some right there. Um, I think a, an elite player would have probably just kept him snuffed up under the 14, 9, and 5. and wait for a better opportunity. So he's finally given Lunda a little room, a little breathing room. He played the double kiss. He played the double kiss towards his hole. The old Detroit special cornbread red. Crossing this six into the two. The cue, the cue ball needs to get up. Once again, he could clip the six and put him behind the balls. He wants to catch it full. Uh, he's done very well. He has done very well. Nice recovery. Evan really, really working hard to stay alive. I am impressed with his, with his grind, I guess I should say. He worked extremely hard to win that last game. And he seems to be in a similar position this game. Banking the nut, okay. Wants that 15 to hold. Very tough to, very tough to kill that 15 ball and do what he did with the cue ball. <clears throat> but what he's kind of forcing Blaine to do is similar to what just happened two innings ago. If Blaine leaves that cue ball up table anywhere, he's going to give Evan an opportunity to work his way out of the bad position. So I would try and get the cue ball back over here by that 
by that left center diamond, maybe just above it on the lower long rail. And if you want to use the 15 to do it, go for it. Yeah. This is okay, but I, I, I feel like you're just giving too much air. It obviously doesn't look good for Evan. It's not terrible. But when you leave a guy that much space, you, you, you allow him the room to create something or move a lot of things. If that makes any sense. Ooh. Big mistake by Evan Linda. I am pretty sure Evan wanted to catch that two a lot thicker. Evan now owes two. Let's see if he can get that penny moved around the pocket with his tip. Nope. Blaine comes over to assist. Hmm. Boy, I almost like the 11-12 combination here. I think that's what he's got to play. He's got a pretty big pocket. The only way you can miss it is fat. Can he make the... Tw I don't think... Yeah, I mean, it's tight. I don't know that that's warranted. Just I like putting the cue ball just a hair to the right of where it's at and just playing the combination. And rolling forward, dropping down for the two. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Turns out to be a pretty f effective shot. Evan did have a kick. He could have kicked below the two, but the five come a running. Opened everything up and, and kind of made that kick unavailable. Or did make that kick unavailable. As we've seen before in this match, Blaine has kept Evan on the defense more than he's been on the offense so therefore Blaine has controlled this match from pretty much from start to finish it's just impressive if that's you Blaine and I don't know how much you play one pocket but I definitely think you've got the right shaped head for it Well, that's a pretty clever shot. He's got to play the 11-12 now. It's a big pocket, and he can run the cue ball back up to the left center long rail. Okay. You don't want to overhit this. Just play your cue ball up behind the stack. Uh, he said it. He said it way too square. But the two and five have settled up. Oh man, this is trouble. He's actually got a long rail kick. Splitting the 12 and the rail at the same time. He, he could uh, avoid the scratch. Only problem is, I think he would shoot it if that 11 wasn't there. If 
you are just joining us, this is the 23 Derby City Classic One Pocket Division. Blaine Barkus, Young Gun versus Evan Lunda. I think Blaine is a 716 Fargo. I have not seen him play one pocket. I have seen him play. I maybe didn't pay as much attention as I should have, but he's got my attention now. And he is leading this match two to one. Neither player has a loss, and I am your host, Scott Frost. I'm trying to figure out what Evan is looking at. Looking at trying to disturb Blaine's pocket. Whacking the 7 1 into it. Oh, I've got to get a replay of that. I didn't. Uh, so he played the 2. He played the 2 to his hole. Let's take a look at this. Watch the 2 ball. Did he play the. Combination carom into the 12, into the back of the 5, sending the 2 to your side. Wow. If he pl if he actually played that, uh, that knowledge is way upstairs. There's only one opportunity here, and that's to soft kick behind the 2, using the 2 to, your, using the two to snooker everything you've got. Yeah. Man, he had to swerve it a hair, but he really let Evan out there. Evan looking up table. That leads me to believe that he can't see enough of the five to do something down there. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't know what he can do down there because he's got to protect against the two. Yeah, the problem with that is, does the 12 come back into the cue ball? This is all on. Because you have to protect against the two. So he's looking across the face of the 12 with the 5. The problem with that is, is that I don't know how you're going to get the cue ball out of the way. And if you get the kiss, you're going to leave a shot on the 2. Yeah, that, that's what I kept seeing. Blaine Barkus has an opportunity to win this game. And now, I'm sure he's going to rewatch this match once it comes out. In this position, you don't think about anything else but pocketing this too. Let the cue ball handle itself. Knock this down and run the balls. You fully commit to the offensive shot here. Oh, he's overcut it. And Evan Lunda escapes again. I don't know if it's a bulletproof vest or if he's got magical powers, but he continues to dodge some of the some of the bullets headed his direction. And I'm sure he doesn't have an issue with it. He's not out of the woods yet, though. He's got to protect against the 10 bank now. It just tells you how good a position Blaine was in this game. Hmm. 
I, I can't, you know, Evan owes two, so he doesn't want to go backwards much more. But I can't fault Evan for pocketing the two for Blaine and playing the cue ball down here on the center diamond. Did he get there? I guess he cut him off from banking this 10, but it's close. Yeah, he did. He cut him off. So he's done well there. Well, I might look up towards that one. Not there. Yeah. This is tough. Yeah. No, 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 no. Losing that last game could have had a pretty big effect on Blaine. It looks like it might be carrying over. Energy shifts. Things that happen shift. He's made a couple decisions this game when he had Evan completely jackpotted that left Evan an opportunity to get out of the position. Look at that stroke. I am so surprised he didn't go forward. With that angle, he could have come over between the four and all those balls. Evan now owes one. I think he's pretty flat or straight on this four. He's going to roll down for the bank, but the shot's tough enough. Yeah, he's done well. He's done well. He's got to make a decision here. Does he want to draw out for position and just go all out? Or does he want to go forward and just take what he can get? I don't know that he even has the angle to go forward here. Heck, does the 10 even bank? Optical illusion. Okay, I think he's going all out. Buckle in, folks. Man, if you're going to do that, why wouldn't you just draw back a little bit and play the next bank on the three? The angle was not there to draw out and get position. One ball apiece. Now Blaine is the one dodging bullets. Trying to figure out if there's anything available on the. I don't like anything with that ball. I don't think he'll end up shooting that. Wow. Wow, I, I think there's. He could have done something better. I don't think he was in that bad of a position. He 
he's definitely, I think, got to go to the 12 here. Now he's got an opportunity to maybe stick him on the 10. If he can stun over just a hair, I don't know if that's any good. He can go forward again. Oh, boy. Did it get there? Did he leave it perfect? Did he leave a combination bank where he can just stop? 9-12 bank. Doesn't look like it. Not by the body language. Take note of the 5 and 12. Evan's looking at possibly putting the cue ball up table and doubling him up. But he can't two rail the 6 due to the position of the 11. So he's going to take his medicine. He said, I got 3. I owed 2 this game. I'm back in the game. I do break on the hill. I just got to win this game. And that's what Evan's telling himself. Yeah. Not a huge fan of that. Man, I'm going to look at two rail kick in the back of that one. Or just softly kicking into the one. Okay. So Blaine has one and Evan has none. Be careful here. Okay. You've done all right. It's okay. Uh -huh. I don't think it's on the 13 and 8. Evan making the 11 or is he banking the 7? I think he's banking. Oh, he's... Wow. Wow. <laughs> What a, uh, I guess, great shot. It seemed awfully risky due to where the cue ball landed. I know that he intended to double him up, and he did so. But another rotation or two or a hair lower, and he sells the 12 and the game out. I'm a little bit taken back by it. I, and now, once again, Blaine has a kick to the 11. There is no doubt he can swerve and kick... Well, I shouldn't say no doubt. But it looks to me like he can kick below the 6 and 14. Yeah, I don't think this is the shot. The problem is, is the 5 is going away from the 12. If you make it. Oh, he played position. He drew the cue ball and found room to pinch it. Can Evan pocket this combination and make the 12 without following it in? I think that's the key is just caroming into the 12 at the right speed. You've got protection with the 5. Looking at his options. I can't fault him for that. You can never look at your options too much. Well, you understand. I think that this is okay if you're just going to the 12 lightly. You don't have to try and get it too close. It looks to me like it lays good. It's taking a lot of time.
did he leave? <laughs> there he is. Oh, he's put his extension on. Interesting that he's doing this. It looks like the carom lays good. Oh, man. Huge mistake. Huge mistake. He's he's spun that ball out of the out of the way of the twelve, and it's now or never for Blaine Barkus. I like him cutting the six. The problem with the yeah, I like him cutting the six. You're just playing to make the six. Oh. Ho, ho. Oh, what is the combination? Did he get a did he get a shot and a little a little luck? I believe he has gotten a big roll there. Yes, he has. He don't want those to tie up. He just stopped his ball there. If they were that wired, I might have tried to do a little more with my cue ball. He's going to come two rails up for the 10 and 3. Long rail, long rail. Or is the combination on? Nine ball. Uh-uh. I didn't like that shot. I, I like the 13 coming two rails up. Just because of, of the kiss that you were... You were running into the 14. Yeah. I can promise you. Evan is thrilled. To be down four balls to nothing at this moment. He's done pretty well with it. He's done pretty well with it. He has really, really impressed me this match. He has made Evan constantly work, constantly on the defense. He's controlled like most of the most of the match, if not all of the match, the game that Evan won, he was down five to five to one or five to two. Coming. Yeah, man, I wasn't a fa I was not a fan of that. Blaine has a couple options here. He could bank this 11 into the bottom of the 6-8. Pocketing the 11 in the corner. Or he can bank the 11 into the 14. You just have to protect against the 5. I don't mind banking the 11 into the bottom of the balls and drawing under the 14 here. Oh, you got to hit it. Did you hit it? Did you hit it? Did you hit it? He didn't hit it. Once again, dodging another bullet. And now you gotta you gotta look at the fourteen. You've gotta look at it. If you played overcut it, can you get the cue ball into the four? I'm talking about banking the fourteen towards your pocket. The way these balls lay, if you pocket the fourteen with a five to nothing ball lead. You've got an opportunity here. Yeah, 
Yes, and the ball count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, five balls to nothing. Blaine Barkas. Evan just pocketed that last ball for him. Yeah, and, and I like the shot he shot, so he had room to make the 14, and Evan dodged another bullet there. And he, I'm not saying that he was a favorite to make it, but if he does, he's in trouble. He's got to really pay attention to what happens here. That's why that 14 was so effective, because you have all those blockers there, 6, 8, and 13. Pretty containing. I just don't know if Blaine can see the 13 or the 8. Cross that into the 14 and call it a night. Stay attacking. In this position, the way these balls lay, you can stay aggressive. You can cross this, right? He can see the 8 for sure. He can see the 13 as well. If you max this up with inside English, crossing the 13 to the bottom of the 14 you can spin to the left side of the 6 and 8 I'm saying cross the 13 to the center long rail low diamond excuse me to the low long rail diamond and just play cue ball one rail up towards the 1 with extreme inside English and this is what he's looking at this is a game winner here. You're just playing all cue ball. If you pocket something, it's a bonus. Oh, he hit it really hard. You didn't have to hit it. That already caught the point. The less speed, the more that cue ball is going to take. He was obviously uncomfortable with the shot. It's turned out okay. Unless Evan decides to just go ahead and wing at this four. I don't know that he can. With the side pocket being there and a couple other <laughs> issues. I do see something Evan can do. If he can see the ten. Yeah. I don't know. Got me stumped right here. Yeah, Evan is definitely uh, taking his time. He knows it's important. I don't know what he's looking at there. Sometimes Evan will do that. He's looking all around and thinking of he's very creative thinking of things that we might not see or think. We're not at the table. But he's going through his own process. I have. Boy, is he looking to cut the four? Yeah, 
Yeah, he's looking to cut the four. He could he could potentially lose this match on this shot. Oh, what a hit. What a hit did he get there? What a hit that was. I would love to see a replay of this. Um, even though he's in position on the 13 and he's out of this bad position that he was in. Let's take a look at his hit. He's drawn it above the side pocket and almost got onto the 13. And that's a great re oh, what a shot, Evan Lunda. Under the, under the steam and under the circumstances, I mean, I think you've got to remove the 14 now to to consider or kick. He can't reach it, so he's got to kick to it softly. I would kick softly. He's looking to kick with speed. Oh man. I would be looking at it like I got out of the position. Yeah. Did he get away with it? I don't think so. He acts like he didn't get away with it. Boy, he might have got very fortunate there. I'm surprised he kicked it like that. Yeah, he got away with it. What's he doing? Huh. Turned out okay. I would have come off the bottom side of the 13 and just came to the right and then down. Can Evan bank at this eight? He's going. Oh, look at the control here. Look at control. He was aware of the fact that the 13 did not play and that he could at least get the six if he can make the eight. Uh, you don't want this young man to get redialed. It looks like he has. And this leads back to the cross corner that Blaine had on that 13. And he hit it really quick, stroked it, and hit it real hard. Uh, and then left the cut on the four. And it led to this series of events. Oof, he's lucky he clipped that seven. Or this 10 was coming down. Let's see how Blaine responds. <clears throat> he responds with a smile. It's a great response. But let's see how he responds on the table. He's got to protect. He's got to protect that one. I'm going to bank on that. He could one rail the seven, but I don't know if you can get the cue ball clear of of selling out the ten. Yeah, I just don't know that that shot's available, the seven.
Yeah, so he's going to go at the seven here, but I'm concerned about him getting the cue ball out of the way. Oh, look at this hit, folks. Look at this hit. And oh, what an excellent hit. So he's going to be playing for two balls, and they are there. I mean, what a great hit. He got the most out of that, too. He swung the cue ball. He's got to play this 10, and he's got options. He can drop to the 5, he can drop to the 14, or he can hold for 3. Or he can miss it. And that's really unfortunate and tough to see. He had this in the palm of his hand, and he knows it. It's something he can go back and look at, though no matter how this match turns out, just go back and look at that final stroke. Um, Jeremy Jones is great at pointing that as, out as well. There's a lot of times somebody will decelerate or accelerate, and I think he was real quick with that backswing, that final stroke. Uh, he's he's decelerated, and uh, and you can go see that for sure too. I like crossing the 10, and here's why we do that. Yes, he's got a bank on the 14. Doesn't really warrant position. Crossing the 10, at minimum, you're thinking of hanging it up, right? Putting you on the hill to where you have 7. You, you're favored to make it, but at worst, you can hang it up. Now, if you hang it up and you leave Evan the 3, position isn't guaranteed. So you're just playing to cross this 10. You, you typically want to overcut it a hair because it's going to drop more than you think. But you're taking a chance to rip the balls or and sell out instead of possibly win the game or at least get yourself to needing one. So this is a situation of pro probable inexperience from what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. So definite inexperience. If he's trying to rip these, I don't think that that's the shot. I'm crossing the 10, and I think most of the top one pocket players are crossing the 10. And here is why. It's just very, very risky. Whether it did or didn't go, whether that's unlucky or not, you didn't really know where those two balls were going, and look at where you left the cue ball, Blaine. Right? If you're going to try and rip those balls, at least go forward. So that's that's no good. Looking back, he'll he'll learn some things from this match. I've learned some things from him. But now Evan can probably get position. Yeah. couple of opportunities late in game four slipping away from Lane Barkas. Don't get me wrong, he's played a great match to this point. Just a couple of uh, possible mental errors that he's not familiar with, and I think it's an experience. I'm going to chalk it up as that. I know he doesn't have decades of one pocket under his belt. Yeah, I think the 13 is a shot. The problem is he's elevated over the 5, and he can't protect against the 12, cutting at the 5 if he happens to miss it. He's going at the 13. I think he's got to go. F well, I thought he would go forward with a little high right and come behind that that ball. It looks like he's going to draw it. Evan taking plenty of time here in these last uh, last minutes of this game.
Okay. He's going for this is this is this is a game winner. Uh, he's over he's overcut it, but he's done that due to the cue ball. That's why I was thinking he could follow that with spin and get it back up under there without any problems. But he could catch the ball fuller if he did that. Blaine's got another opportunity, guys. He can cut this ball. Yeah, I just seem like his pace is a little fast. He's, he seems a little bothered, a little frustrated. You've got to let that go, especially in one pocket. Nine ball, it's easier to let mistakes go because you get more opportunities at the, at the pocket. Yeah, he's hit this too thick, I think. Well, it's on layaway. Now, I love it because... He's going to he's gonna get the feeling of being on the hill with the ball. Now they're playing with three balls on the table. And that's taking you back when he should have crossed the 14 to begin with. So Evan's got to give this up. But where do you leave the cue ball? You're going to leave Blaine a bank on the five if you just leave the cue ball right there. You've got to be aware of that, and he is. Yeah, it's pretty much all he could do. I can't blame him. All right, Blaine Barkas has got an opportunity. You just don't want to hit this too thin. Hit it. You're better to hit it fat than you are thin. Or you can hit it perfect. Or you can hit it perfect. Or near perfect. He's forced Evan to cut this 13. And this is f for the win for Blaine Marcus. So the, the pressure is on. I would not be looking at the one. He's just going to chalk up. Evan is very good at leveling out. He's very good at cutting the ball. I would not be surprised... If he is playing to cut the 13 for the match to keep himself alive. He's hit it fat. What an upset, in my opinion. Blaine Barkas showed me a lot. And I've got to give all the credit to him. He's controlled 90% of this match, maybe more than that. Um, Evan didn't play terrible. He, he had Evan kind of against the ropes most of the time. I am your host, Scott Frost, the Freezer. Thank you very much for joining us. Blaine moves on to round six. Evan is still in. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.